This video covers setting up the reviewer group template. The things that we'll be covering in this video include the reviewer group template, setting up basic instructions and settings as a starting point for all reviewer groups, and also attaching and detaching reviewer groups from the reviewer group template. So you can use them with or without the template to set up a customized experience for your reviewing committees. So let's go ahead and jump into a test site and take a look at the reviewer group template. The reviewer group template can only be accessed by system administrators in the academic work system. And it's a basic element in establishing reviewers for your scholarship awarding process. As the name template implies, the reviewer group template holds the basic information upon which all reviewer groups can be established. In order to navigate to the reviewer group template, administrators should choose Opportunity, Evaluators, and Group Template. From here you will land on the details page of the reviewer group template. And we have two different areas on the details page. The first area is group information. Now since this is not an actual reviewer group, the information is not really going to pertain to the rest of your system. So you might put something very generic in there. Group information is only visible to administrators and reviewers do not see the information in that section. The most important aspect of the Details tab is the Reviewer Note. This note will be displayed at the top of the scoring rubrics and questions that reviewers encounter when evaluating every application or applicant in your system. You may wish to use the Reviewer Note to remind reviewers of standards, to provide guidance on how to select appropriate candidates, or simply to provide contact information for someone in your institution or organization to contact with questions. Any time that you make a change in the reviewer note, please be sure to click the green update button to save any of that work. The next tab is the reviewers tab. This tab displays all users with reviewer permissions in your academic work system, as well as which groups they work in. The total number of visible assigned evaluations and the total number of completed evaluations that they have submitted. You can add reviewers to your system straight up from this page, but remember that reviewers you add on the reviewer group template are not added to specific reviewer groups. You would still need to add them at the reviewer group level when you create the new group. To add a new reviewer, just click Add Reviewers, they begin by typing in their email address. If they are already a user in your system and just not a reviewer, they will pop up as you search for them. But if not, you can just type in the entire email address and click enter and they will show up in the box below. You can add as many reviewers in this box as you like, just be sure that you only enter one per line. There are no commas or colons required. Just enter and enter the information on the next line. Then click Add or Invite. Adding or inviting a reviewer into the system will not send them a communication. Communications are not sent to reviewers until the review period opens and it's time for them to come in and complete their reviews. The Questions tab is where you may include a series of questions that will be asked of your reviewers by default. Just as when building questions for applicants or reference providers, you have a wide range of possible question types to direct towards your reviewers. Here on this particular review, reviewer group template, we already have one question, which is a reviewer note, which is an area that you can leave for reviewers to make any notes about the application that they're reviewing. If you want to add additional questions, you can click on Add Reviewer Question. This will launch the question creation screen. When a new window opens, you may create a new question 
or use one that has already been created. To create a new question or question set, just type the question into the reviewer question label box. Click on single question to make just one question or question set to begin creating a question set. Choose the question type and if your question requires choices, you can enter each choice on its own individual line. Save the question and your question will land in the question creation screen where you will then need to click the plus to add it to your reviewer group questions. Once you close the screen, you'll be able to see that question there on your reviewer group template. You can grab it and move it around, make them required, or even remove them if you don't want to use the question any longer. Be sure to update your questions after making any changes. The important thing to remember about questions is all of the questions on your reviewer group template will be reflected in any new reviewer group that you create. So you want to use questions that are going to be common among all reviewer groups at your institution. If you put very specialized questions in your reviewer group template, you may have several groups that you need to go in and remove that question and create a bit more work for yourself. So really you want to keep these questions to a very common question that would be shared among most of your reviewer groups. Once you have completed configuring your reviewer group template, you're free to go ahead and set up any new reviewer groups. To set up a new reviewer group, you can go to Evaluators and Groups, where you'll see a list of all groups that already exist in your system. If you're creating groups for the first time, your page would obviously be blank. But to create a new reviewer group, you can just click Create Reviewer Group and walk through the steps of configuring that group. We do have two additional videos that will walk you through the creation of a reviewer group, whether you're reviewing the general or conditional application or reviewing specific opportunities. Please take a moment to take a look at that video before you begin creating reviewer groups. Once a reviewer group is created, it will display on this page where you will see the name of the group, any scopes that the group might belong to, the number of reviewer members in the group, whether that group is attached to the template or detached, and how that group assigns reviews. The information that we want to take a look at is the attached or detached column on the reviewer group. An attached reviewer group is going to have inherited all of the attributes of that reviewer group template. And those attributes will be locked down and cannot be edited on an attached reviewer group. Those items are the reviewer note, the reviewer questions, and the rubrics. Because these are locked down, you're not currently able to make any changes to these items. If you need to customize a reviewer group, you can do so by detaching the reviewer group from the reviewer group template. In order to detach a group and customize it, you can just click the Detach button where you'll see a message that this action is irreversible. The group will no longer receive questions or rubrics from the reviewer group template. And it is assuring that that, that is really what you want to do. Do you want to detach it? Once you detach it, you cannot reattach it to the template. When you make changes to the template, those changes are reflected in any attached group. 
but those changes will not be reflected in a detached group, and a detached group would then have to be updated manually. I'm going to go ahead and detach my group by clicking OK. And then I will land on the newly detached reviewer group that is indicated by the detached underneath the reviewer group name. Once I have detached it, those items that were locked down previously have now been opened up and I'm free to make any changes that are required. I can add new reviewer questions or remove questions that I do not want to present to this particular group. And I can also create new rubrics for this group, disable any of the enabled rubrics, or enable any of the disabled rubrics. The Rubrics tab is extremely important for the evaluations process, as this allows you to determine the default scoring rubrics that will be used by reviewers to generate scores for all applications or applicants in your academic work system. Please keep in mind that these will become the default scoring rubrics for all attached reviewer groups in your system. If you do have special situations where the reviewers or opportunities that will not be using the standard scoring rubrics, you'll be able to create an exception for those cases. Go ahead and enter the most common rubrics into the template, and you can break away from that template at a later point. To create a new scoring rubric, simply fill in the needed information and click Create Rubric button. You would want to enter in the name of the attribute that you would like your reviewers to score at. The minimum score is the lowest score possible that reviewers can choose from, while the maximum is the highest score possible. All scores are normalized to 100 points, so you don't need to worry if your rubrics don't all have the same minimum and maximum score. The offset is the intervals between scores. For example, an offset of 1 allows the choices of 1, 2, 3, 4 when a reviewer is selecting their score, but an offset of 2 would offer them the choices of 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. If there is an element that you would like to carry more overall importance, such as financial need or academic success, you may weight that rubric by, by a multiplying factor so that it produces a larger number and thus raises the overall score for the application or applicant. Please note that the weighting number is the multiplying factor only. It does not calculate percentage value of the total overall score. Once you have created your rubric, you will see that rubric displayed in the list of enabled rubrics on your reviewer group template. Rubrics are, are added into the system in the order in which they're created, and the order cannot be changed. So be sure that you're adding them in the order that you want reviewers to see them as reviewers are completing reviews. If you need to remove a rubric or disable it, you can just click the Edit button uncheck the enabled box and update your rubric. That will move the rubric to the enabled rub or disabled rubrics list and will not present that rubric to your reviewers to answer.